All right then guys, welcome to the video, welcome back to the channel, and today we're going to be, as you can see, working under the bonnet of the S2000. I've actually decided to go for an induction kit for this thing because I just wasn't happy with how little I could hear the induction sound for the VTEC crossover. In my head, I basically had three options. It was either go full send, get a carbon induction kit, either the Jays Racing one, maybe find a Mugen one, something like that. Reasons I didn't want to go for that. One, quite expensive, and to be honest, this car isn't going to stay NA, so I didn't want to invest too much in those parts when this is going to change and two you have to actually run one of the either jay's racing or mugen depending on which way you go you have to run one of their bonnets to be able to fit it without cutting your standard one the other end of the spectrum is just get a cone filter and just fit it i didn't want to do that either because it's just heat so crazy i know how great the standard airbox is and i know you could just do some mods i just hate how plasticky it looks and because it won't stay forever anyway i just thought i'd rather lose those couple of horsepower here or there to get a much better intake sound is sort of where i'm leaning towards really that's why I've sort of gone with what I thought was the best middle ground between all of that and I've gone with the KNN fuel injection performance kit. The cone's pretty cool, it's got like this carbon fiber effect on the end, that's quite a cool feature. This rubber bit sort of seals against the bottom of the bonnet which means you get more of a cold air sort of feed. I'm going to go off of the instructions that I found from KNN that are online and hope that I have everything here basically. But before we start pulling this one out, let's head out and get some clips of a before sound so you know what this thing sounds like as it is right now. I mean, yeah, it sounds good already, but I want to get it more obvious like that third gear pull into VTEC. That's sort of more the sound I'm looking for, sort of more like the crossover was on the Civic before that got mapped. That's the baseline that we're starting with anyway, so let's start pulling this one out. Okay, so the first thing the instructions are saying to do is to remove the six clips. So I've actually never taken this airbox off, so these clips are pretty easy to undo, that's good to know. So does that mean this lifts off now? It does. Oh, there we go. Wow, that filter's actually pretty clean. Also, I thought I should mention, yes, I know that there is the airbox mod that you could have done that would have been better for performance, I know, but I just thought the noise is going to be better than just having this as a closed unit. Okay, next up is this air induction bit here, so I'm going to get some pliers and sort of spring this off so I can get this pipe clear. Okay, let me get a tool for that. Try and get this pipe off. All right, I'll come back to you once I've got this thing off. Okay, so I got it to go. Good tip is just use some washing up liquid on the hose as you get it off so it makes it easier to slide out once it eventually goes. Okay, next up is the hard line from the crankcase. So it's this one here. Still pretty hot from my before audio clip, so it should be interesting. This wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be. My engine is still very warm, so this pipe I had to hold with this. You just pull because this has a little bit of play, but mainly the intake pipe is the one you want to move back. So next step is taking off the intake hose because I don't have the air temp sensor. I'm assuming this is a pre-facelift, facelift, AP1, AP2 thing. So I can skip that step and I'm moving straight on to taking off the entire intake hose. Boom. There we go, it's off. Okay, so I've now got to remove this solenoid here. So just a Phillips head screwdriver in there. I've already cracked it to make sure I've had the right size. So apparently this needs to come all the way out. I'm guessing this is the clip that they're talking about in the instructions. Okay. Next up, we've got to remove three bolts. So you see that one right in there, down there, and then we've got one at the back down there as well. There's also this hose was clipped in to all these little clips here, so I've just unclipped that too. So I'm gonna get removing those and then we'll see what happens. Okay, this thing hopefully will just lift out now, but there's another couple things attached. Oh my God, that was such a nightmare. Finally got that clip off. Had to flip this whole thing upside down basically. Right, this is out. A lot of room in here now. I might actually just wipe stuff down whilst I can actually get access to everything. So I'll be back once this is a bit cleaner. 
Okay, that looks a little bit better. Right, we can now move on to the next step. These next few steps are where I'm not sure if I have everything or not. So it's asking me to remove quite a lot of stuff and I don't know what happens with it because I haven't read further into the instructions, but at the same time, I'm hoping I have things if I need them to be able to install this thing. Let's find out. Anyway, so next up, I've got to take this piece off here. Okay, so I just watched a video because this was getting crazy. I didn't realize I was actually deleting stuff as well. I'm pretty certain we're gonna run into a point where I don't have a bracket for something. So let's see what happens. But next up is gonna be, we are removing these two lines from the hard line just here. I'm gonna pull these two off and basically we are deleting this piece here. So I managed to get one off already. That's both of those lines off now. Next up, we have the vacuum hose on the solenoid here and here. I need to remove both of those. Right, there goes the one on the solenoid. And there goes that bit too. Okay, basically this entire piece is coming out here. So there's a little clip in here you've got to pop off as well, but I also need to get these coolant lines off. So I'm just gonna put some kitchen roll down here so I don't cover my alternator in coolant or anything. Managed to get coolant all over me, but that one's off. Glad I put the kitchen roll there. Let's try and get this lower one off now. Okay, it's saying the next step is to remove this whole assembly and I can do that almost apart from this clip holding on this here. This clip does actually just unclip, so that's what I did and pulled this whole piece out. This is way more involved than I was expecting. Okay guys, it's actually been a bit of time. My suspicions were correct. There was quite a few hoses and stuff missing. So what I've had to go and do is obviously buy some hoses and stuff to make this work. I'm missing a bracket as well. If you are buying this kit secondhand, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the fitting instructions. I would 100% recommend checking that first to check you've got all the bits because I'm just sort of bodging together a load of little bits. The bracket and everything you can see down here, that is what you need to be able to mount that part. If you have that, obviously this also depends on whether you have a facelift, preface of AP1, AP2. I believe anyway this hose and this hose are the same I had to buy, go buy those I had to buy a hose here for the coolant line as well none of this is permanently installed yet this is also v1 of the bracket so it's not actually going to look like this when it's fully fully finished but I just wanted to get it to a point where it's running this is just what I was able to find at the auto parts store local to me there is obviously nicer hoses out there the next step going to get some jubilee clips and then install some of this stuff a bit more permanently than it is right now and then we can move on with actually installing the intake so all of those bits are now installed with jubilee clips and everything again will look better in the future and now we're moving on to this intake box again no hardware included so having to figure out things as we go it's some m6 bolts i've got one on the front fully installed and i've got just one on the rear that needs changing but we're basically at the point now where everything just goes together so the tube's going to come in if you've bought this kit brand new there's a few steps of putting stuff together that mine was already done just because it was just easily taken off a car so going to properly mount the air box in we're now going to get this pipe installed so i'm hoping this is going to be relatively simple. It should just go on like that. That was easy. I'm going to tighten down these Jubilee clips. It's time to get this filter on. What I'm going to do is put some washing up liquid in here so that it fits on the tube a bit easier. Right, let's tighten this Jubilee clip down and then we've just got a couple more hoses to do. So from what I can work out, the last two bits are that I need to get this hose onto here like that and I also then need to run this hose from here on the case to there and that is the whole thing installed so I won't bore you with that because it's just putting a hose on so I'll get back to you once this is in and we're ready to try and start it the moment of truth will it start and will it start without any engine codes let's find out here we go three two one we have no engine codes wow I think we're all good. Let me just check the dash again. We have no lights on the dash. It is installed. So guys, I am very happy that that has all been installed and is working because in theory, if you have everything and you buy this new, pretty simple install because it does give you all the instructions, but I wasn't totally sure because I didn't have all those bits. Now it's in and it starts with no engine codes. It means road test time. So let's jump out on the road and let's see how this thing sounds. Right then guys, let's go. I am very excited for this. I've been letting the car warm up while I've been doing a bit of car juggling with the Civic. We're apparently up to temperature, but I'm gonna take it for a little drive to start with anyway. This is legit the first drive as well, so you'll be experiencing everything as I experience it. Wow, even I can even tell even just at normal driving speeds, I can hear things from the front as well as the back now, rather than just being the back. Normal day driving, 
driving completely fine, got no engine code or anything. Feels completely normal to drive. Really can't complain, to be honest, at, at normal speeds at the moment. Okay, let's find out. us down oh my god okay i was expecting a change i was not expecting a change quite as crazy as that that was second gear at like well i almost was in vtech when i started that acceleration and it was already noticeable i need to get a third gear pull like i did beforehand so, so we can fully match that but that is way louder than i was expecting it to be wow all right i'm gonna see if i can get a second gear pull in here <laughs> Still got no engine lights or anything, so I think we're all good on that front. That was full to redline rev, so from that point of view, I think we're good. Oh my God, I need to hear this thing in third gear. Okay, here we go. Here's third gear. <laughs> oh my god, this car is so good! I know I'm probably going to lose a couple of horsepower once it gets hot in the engine bay, but I don't care for that sound. That makes it fully, fully worth it. So guys, this, this thing sounds so good. I am so happy that I've done this. Like I said, I'm obviously gonna lose a couple of horsepower here or there because of the hot air eventually getting to this thing. I don't care. This thing isn't gonna stay NA, so I'm not worried about finding the best one for an NA car. For the time being, this thing just makes this thing sound so much, well, more like how I picture Hondas to sound anyway. So moving forward, I'm gonna probably end up sorting out these hoses and making it look a bit better, different bracket, that sort of thing. But what I'll do is I'll keep you updated moving forward with the build of this car. Overall first impressions of this thing, it sounds absolutely incredible. The install instructions, really thorough, really useful. If you're buying this kit new, this would be so much easier to install than me trying to figure out what I had and what I didn't have. That being said though, it is quite a lot more expensive to buy brand new than it is secondhand, so you can weigh it up how you like. Gives all kind of driving characteristics of this car a bit more low end sort of volume even just driving around normally just sounds beefier i suppose is the best way to explain it i don't know but anyway that's going to do it for this one guys hopefully you've enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video go check out the channel if there's any other videos on this car or on my civic type r ep3 as well leave a comment down below if you are running this or if you're running a different kind of induction kit on yours would be interesting to know what you guys are running so yeah don't forget to subscribe like this one and i'll catch you guys in the next one